Welcome everyone to the latest installment of Ariva Academy's further webinars. My name is Eric Smith and I'll be your trainer for today's session, which is titled User Management, Creating Roles and User Privileges. Uh, just a little housekeeping before we get started. Uh, if you're having trouble seeing me or hearing me uh, or seeing the screen, just send a chat message and someone on our staff will assist you with getting connected. Also, we're recording today's session and it will be available for viewing in two to three days uh, from our website. Uh, you can find the recorded sessions by going to our website, www.areva.com, clicking on services, and then coming down to Academy. Once you're on this page, go ahead and scroll down and you'll see both our upcoming classes, if you want to attend additional classes, or our previously recorded classes. That's where this particular recording of today's session will reside. All right. Um, finally, I just want to appreciate your willingness to take time out of your busy schedule to join us. I know with everything that's going on, uh, things are kind of chaotic and crazy. Uh, but that's also why these trainings will always be short and will not field questions. If you're interested in a more in-depth training on any subject related to further, please contact trainings, that's plural, trainings, at areva.com. All right, let's go ahead and explore user management, creating roles and user privileges. Where you set up your users, which you may already know, is under the administration tab, under the pull-down menu where it says, hello, your name. Under there is a sub-tab called user management. Now, you should already be familiar with how to create a new user. Today, we're going to talk about how you can adjust roles and then the privileges under those roles to then apply to a user and thereby go ahead and say restrict their access to certain parts of the program or, you know, say that they get access to everything. Before I go into this, though, what I want to point out is that you can find out information if you don't know how to create a user in your program. And by the way, you can create an unlimited number of users. Uh, you can do so by going into the help menu. Once it comes up in a separate screen, just go ahead and expand it. Under contents, go ahead and, ex go ahead and expand getting started. And then under there is a section called adding users. This will walk you through much of what you would learn going ahead and adding a new user to your program. Today, however, we're going to go ahead and just focus on you've already got a user set up and now you want to go ahead and establish roles. When you first get access to Beyond, there already is a role created called the super user. And that role has access to everything. It has privileges to be able to access everything in the program. Now, what I'm going to talk about is that you can go ahead and, you know, typically the super user is attached to maybe one or two people at your organization who need to have access to everything, as well as, of course, creating new users. But what I'm going to talk about is maybe you want to go ahead and set up some different roles for different staff. So, for instance, maybe for your um, board members, I've seen this come up before, you want to go ahead and create a role and that privileges for that role will then go ahead and maybe you take away all their edit rights. Maybe you give them view rights to certain things. You know, they can go in and run a report. They can go in and, and look at records and stuff like that. Maybe you don't want them to go into certain parts of the program, like admin or whatever. But you go ahead and kind of tailor what rights they should have so that they can log in and look at records. Because maybe they're helping you do soliciting for a major um, capital campaign that you're doing or something. I've seen that before. Your volunteer coordinator, maybe you want that. Um, as you can see, we're using demo data, so we have quite a few uh, user uh, roles already created. I'm going to go ahead and actually add a new one, and this one is for the grants manager. And I'm going to make it active so it shows up. Okay, and I got to make sure I hit save. A lot of these things you might put the stuff in and then forget to hit save, and then it doesn't show up later on. So go ahead and make sure you hit save. And that'll take me back to user because it thinks I want to add a new user. Well, at this moment, though, I really want to go into role privileges. And I want to go ahead and actually adjust the privileges for this particular role, which is, of course, the grant manager. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and select from the drop-down menu here. Uh, let's 
see here, I made it active. Maybe I need to refresh it. And there it is. And I'm going to hit go. And at this point, they have rights to nothing. Okay. Now, I could give them, say, view rights to everything. When I click on this upper portion up here, it actually checks all the boxes in that column down below. When you go ahead and check edit, that's the same as giving view. Notice these view rights here are suddenly grayed out. That's because if they have edit rights, obviously they have view rights. Okay. Um, for the grant manager, I might go ahead and just scroll through and decide, okay, well, I'm going to give them I'm going to start by giving them edit rights to everything, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to back off and go ahead and remove their rights to go ahead and access certain things. So maybe under the quick add area, which is that sort of section when you're first in the home page, that quick links in the quick add over here. Maybe I, you know, don't want them to have access to the volunteer module. Um, gifts is fine. Membership, no. Guest module, no. And some of these modules you may not have volunteers, schedule volunteers. So I go through and I just kind of like say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and just modify all these rights so that only our grant managers have access to certain things. And you're going to see lots of rights here under mailings, reports. As we get down here further, you'll see things like grant, okay, versus guest. You might take away their rights to all of the uh, uh, reports related to the guest module. So you're kind of tailoring it just to that particular individual or those individuals within that department that need access to uh, certain things only. You know, maybe they don't need access to the campaign manager, but maybe access to the event manager because maybe you, you know, use grants for events or whatever. So kind of go through and just determine what they should have access to, removing as you go along. Once you've done that, remember to click save. That will save your changes. So that's really the gist of creating a role. A role is something you're going to apply to a number of different users and then going ahead and adjusting the privileges or rights under that particular role. Now, a couple quick things. If you need to go ahead and change a role for somebody, maybe you added a new role and suddenly you decide, oh, well, that particular person um, shouldn't uh, have that role anymore, the old role of super user, now I want to give them this new role. Well, you can go ahead and come in and highlight their user, click on change role, and then go ahead and remove it from them, and then go down and say, okay, well, I'm going to give them this one, the grants one, and I'm going to hit save. All right. So now you've gone ahead and changed the role for them. Obviously, when you're creating a new user, which like I said, that section in the help menu will explain on how you, do, you can do that. You can also contact technical support and they'd be happy to walk you through creating a new user. Then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and make sure you at least select one role. You can select more than one. Maybe somebody should have you know this role and that role. Um, so that's, the extent of going ahead and establishing and creating roles. Got to make sure once you've gone ahead and made it active, you save it. Then you go ahead and you select the role from the drop down menu and hit go. Notice here, you know, the board members, all they have are view rights, right? And then go ahead and make sure you uh, change any roles for any of your existing users, but also as you're adding new users, make sure they get the correct role. If you ever want to just see what roles a particular user has before you go ahead and change their roles, you can go to the user role report. And at this point, you can go ahead and you can select the user. Maybe I want to see what um, foundation demo has. You know, and I don't necessarily need to select a role. I can, and I'll show you this in a moment, but I can hit this and I can see, oh, they have the grant particular user. And you may, you know, select a user and then see that they have multiple different users. Some of them overlap, maybe one you want to take away or whatever, and that's when you go back and you change their role. Now, maybe you want to see everybody who has, say, um, the administrator role, okay? And in that case, you're only going to select the role, hit go, and you see everybody that has that, all right? So that's the extent of roles and role privileges. Part of this is to be able to kind of, you know, adjust who has access to what part of the program. Um, 
Now, you may be a very small outfit, and therefore everybody gets the super user, and you have no need to create roles. But at some point, you may want to do that. Like I said, board members are great when they come along and they say, I'd like to get access to your database. Well, you can easily create a role for them after you've created a user for them, and go ahead and then adjust their role privileges. So that's all we have for today. Um, as mentioned at the beginning, a recording of today's session will be available for viewing in two to three days by going to our website. Again, that's going to www.areva.com, clicking on services, then academy, and coming down to the previous re re recorded uh, episodes, which you'll see there. And if you're interested in more in-depth training on this or any further topic, again, please feel free to email trainings at areva.com. Um, thank you for attending today's webinar, and I hope you have a great day.